I'm Lee and welcome to another episode of Talk the Talk. I'm your host Dish and today I am so thrilled and so excited to introduce and welcome Kia Spato, who's not from Kia, she's actually from Ford, Ford Guest Experience Coach at Ford SA. So Kia has a strong understanding of automotive technology and the automotive industry. She's quick to solve any problems that arise at the workplace and she knows how to communicate effectively with any customer. Her customers and the team and the people that she trained often return for her advice, which is why it's clear to say that she maintains a positive um, experience and relationship with all the people that surround or around her. She keeps to a strict schedule to ensure that she works efficiently for her own benefit as well as for the benefit of the people around her. So let's welcome Kia. And as always, this interview is proudly brought to you by Suriti Solutions. Hello. Hello, Kia. My gosh, you are full of energy from the moment you arrived. (laughs) Like I asked you, first question, do you know Masha Mayaba? Yes. (laughs) (laughs) Masha Mayaba is not only my ambassador, being my MC, being one of the pioneers in everything that I do. Yeah. But uh, I spoke to her yesterday, literally. Yeah. I mean, she was the first black dealer principal. That's amazing. In South Africa. That's amazing. She's also the first black female executive, yeah. franchise executive yeah. in South Africa. That's amazing. And she became the first black CEO for Bala World That's amazing. in South Africa. That's amazing. I spoke to her yesterday and yeah. when we met, I'm like, listen, I'm going to call her now. You are mini <laughs> Masha. We have another Masha in the making. I received. You received because she's phenomenal. Um, but yeah, first and foremost, you are a finalist for the Motoring Woman of the Year Awards. Yes. Congratulations. Yes. Thank you so much. Thank you. I think it's such an honor. So thank you so much. I really appreciate that. And thanks to NetBank. Thanks to Sereti Solutions and Talk the Talk. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. you can't thank me. I did not nominate you. <laughs> <laughs> I also did not. I did not help with your um, profile reaching top 300 out of thousands of nominations. Well, we, yeah. But so, we, there we go. Thanks for the there invite. We go. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> so um, let's start off, and I know you're so excited. Yes, Tell I, us, I know you travel the country um, training, meeting yes, people, but yes. how did this journey with Ford begin? Or sure. how did your journey in motoring begin? Yeah. I think the motor industry was quite a foreign um, industry for me in a sense that you know, when you purchase a car, you're not really part of the industry. You're just purchasing the vehicle. Right. So at the time, I think it was 2016, if not 17 at the time, mm-hmm. um, where I was working, the company had been bought by another company and they were relocating to Cape Town. Mm-hmm. So it was an option of either, you know, you relocate to Cape Town or you basically take your package and, and, and source employment elsewhere. Mm-hmm. And I chose to source employment elsewhere mm-hmm. and I landed in the motor industry. It wasn't a plan but I literally landed in it and I love it Mm -hmm. so safe to say I've been in this industry for for quite some time now it's been about six to going on seven years and I love it and how it started off I was at dealer level Mm -hmm. and I was quite fortunate that I was working for a dealer that required somebody who would be flexible in terms of handling multiple portfolios so from training I would handle a bit of that Um, very big on marketing, very big on events. Um, I would handle quite a couple of stuff from Ford and the OEM that they wanted the dealer in terms of standards and things like that. So that's how it started. And I think while I was at the dealer, I I, I saw the gaps and the opportunities within the industry. Mm -hmm. And I thought, how do I make myself, you know, a brand within the brand? So something like find out what you're good at and get someone to pay you for it. Absolutely. (laughs) Oh, yes, of course. You know, and I think because I was so exposed to, you know, small little portfolios within the bigger um, position that I was in, I managed to get um, experience in a lot of little things. Mm -hmm. And I think after four, four years of being sort of like a marketing manager, but at the time they called it a lead master, Mm -hmm. um, I sort of decided I wanted to go into training because I started becoming very passionate 
around um, the dealer staff not being trained okay. um, because we do have a lot of people in the dealer network that are not on the training um, curriculum mm -hmm. for the brand. Mm -hmm. And, you know, a lot of them would come and have conversations with me about how do I, you know, study for this course? How do I do this? I want to do better. I want to move from being a cleaner to something else. And I thought to myself, wow. How do I receive so many people requesting, you know, these questions around learning and development? And I was like, that's where I want to go into, into the motor industry, especially, I think, um, within the African culture, because a lot of the African people um, wanted to enhance themselves within the industry, but didn't know how. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I drew a passion from that in terms of my direction going into training. Mm -hmm. And um, from DLL, I moved to um, Customer Relationship Center for Ford where you deal with you know every customer in south africa nationwide in terms of whatever concerns they may have on the product or even the customer service at the dealership and my move to that department was quite intentional because as a coach i wanted to be able to understand what a customer experience and journey is like from that point onwards because mm -hmm. in the customer relations center you deal with every customer in South Africa right. and the problems are very different depending on what area what dealership and that sort of thing and I wanted to learn that part of the customer journey before coming into now being a coach mm -hmm. and I go into the deal and then I train on on customer or guest experience for that matter so that has been a little bit about my journey we could talk for for hours but I can I'll listen to you for hours <laughs> absolutely yeah. um, how do you feel before we even get to the next question about yeah. uh, you know our initiatives? How yeah. do you feel about your brand, Ford? Look, I love Ford. Mm -hmm. I personally love Ford, and I know that the, the the brand. I don't think there's any brand that doesn't have its own flaws. Mm -hmm. But I love the brand, and I love the people that work for the brand. Mm -hmm. um, Ford is um, a company that, or you know, it's owned by a family back in overseas and whatever. So I think a lot of the dealers really do try and capture that family environment in a mm. lot of the dealerships. So that I love. And, and, and the people have got that family spirit yes. in the dealerships, which I absolutely love. It does love. filter down. It really does. It, it does. It really, really I, does. I see it with so many groups or brands or family-owned businesses yeah. where the culture of the owner literally filters down into every absolutely. staff member and they become absolutely. the brand absolutely. and the culture. Absolutely. And I think that's why it's so important that from the top, mm -hmm. it's quite nice and packaged well. Because absolutely. once it's packaged well from the top, mm -hmm. it will go down uh, to the trenches at the bottom quite nicely and everybody sort of absorbs it. Definitely. But also if it's negative, then we've got a different ball game. So yeah, yeah. but generally yeah, the, the Ford brand Definitely is like Definitely a that. different conversation Family. there. Yes. <laughs> Um, so, what is your opinion about everything that we do in terms of empowering women, whether it's MWOT, yeah. uh, whether it's uh, Talk the Talk Studios, yeah. Women Talk, yeah. um, and, all, and not just what I'm doing in the yeah. industry, but what you're doing, because yeah. you are also educating Absolutely. in your own way. How do Absolutely. you feel about these initiatives? You know what? I, 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 I love it because I, I feel that a lot of women in this specific industry are not um, brought forward mm -hmm. and there's a lot of um, people in the industry like your marshes mm -hmm. who hold very um, wonderful positions and positions that have got an impact absolutely in, in, in the dealer staff and the dealer network and they, they're not seen they're not brought to light mm -hmm. so I think initiatives like this is, is a fantastic platform for women in the industry to say Hi, I'm Kia and this is what I do mm -hmm. because you are such a big part of the brand but yet you're not often very much seen mm -hmm. and I think these type of initiatives is really what pushes mm -hmm. women to come to the forefront mm -hmm. and say we are also part of this very heavily male dominated industry. Mm -hmm. We do hold positions that have got value yes. that has an impact. Um, you know, and, and a lot of the times in the dealers is the women that actually run the dealerships, mm -hmm. you know, um, not only in, 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 in their, their, their workspace, but with their personalities, you know, um, how they often come through and soften um, the industry because yes. it's quite rough and quite rigid. Yes. So the, the, the women and dynamic in the industry is, is, is absolutely welcomed. I see the difference mm -hmm. in, 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 in a lot of dealers where there's women that are really powerful and doing what they need to do. and. That you often see it coming through in the dealership 
dynamic, mm-hmm. which is quite nice. And mm-hmm. I think this platform is, is wonderful mm-hmm. because women like ourselves get to then have a chat around what we do and how we do it. And the challenges, how we overcome. How we overcome yes. them and hopefully also inspire some some lady out there who wants to come into the industry to say, come, we can do it. Yeah, absolutely. So, Kia, what do you think women bring different to the table? And why do you think that women would do well or are doing well in motoring? I think exactly what I just mentioned earlier on, because the industry is quite tough. Mm -hmm. It's quite rigid. Mm -hmm. And I think back in the day, we saw very little women in the industry. Yes. And um, now we're seeing, um, you know, master technicians coming up as, as females in the industry and I think that what they bring to the table is that softer touch to the industry Mm -hmm. that human touch to the industry to say because let's be honest you know a lot of the male in 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 the male people in the industry it's it's all about it's very tugger driven it's very you know boom 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 like I said quite rigid and I think the female brings that softer that human element to say maybe let's not do things that way let's do it this way almost creating an open um, sort of playing field for everyone and saying, if you're solving a problem or you're coming up with solutions, don't look at it in one aspect. And mm-hmm. I think they open it up quite nicely. Mm-hmm. And I think um, the males in the industry are also becoming a lot more receptive mm-hmm. to women coming into the industry because they see the benefit of that softer touch mm-hmm. um, that the, the female dynamic brings into the industry. So I think definitely that, that really softer dynamic that. Um, sense of connection yes um you know the ability to listen to what the staff really need and what they really want you know and i think women in this industry uh, create such a nice bridging gap between you know the males in the industry and you know understanding what the staff want mm-hmm. and i think that's what women do mm-hmm. and i think generally women are very good at that sort of thing even in life mm-hmm. um, generally yeah. generally so so mm-hmm. so they bring it together quite nicely and i think um one of the, the, the examples that I, I could think of top of my head is that when I was working at a dealer, um, the head accountant is, is, is female and she was more of a DP than the actual DP, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? Which, which is great because yeah. she, she was like the mother head and everybody went to her for advice and that sort of thing and she was able to say to the men, like, hey, calm down you know uh, you know this I've is the situation this. exactly you know and they also understand because some of them are moms so if you're going through any personal sort of things though those women understand as mm-hmm. opposed to the males in in the industry so mm-hmm. heads off to them man. yeah heads off. so Kia, yeah, i hope that the, my next question your your superiors are not listening to <laughs> when will you be available to join my team <laughs> I don't think I can answer that. Should I'm we just have a chat kidding. later? I'm just kidding. But you have such a powerful voice. Thank and you. I'm hoping that you would take this back to your people. You. Everything that we're doing. I know you are coaching and you're yeah. training. And, and that's your yeah. um, a line of work. And yeah. that's the narrative that yeah. you currently have. Yeah. But if you could... You know, if I could borrow five minutes of your time yeah. within all your training sessions and you bring a bit of this into yeah. it, woman empowerment, yeah. I would appreciate yeah. it. And there you go, you're working for me already. <laughs> okay. <laughs> if you uh, felt like you were hitting mm. the, you know, the proverbial wall. Yes. Okay. And getting burnt out, what would you do? to re-energize yourself. Not that you need re-energize Yeah, yeah no, I don't. Yes. Yeah, I have to think really hard about <laughs> that because my energy is always so high. But I think for me, sure, my family, mm-hmm. hey, my family, um, I've got a wonderful husband who's quite supportive in, 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 in throughout this entire journey that I've been um, because it, it's quite intense, long hours and mm-hmm. this and that. So I think for me, the re-energizing really comes from spending time with my family and just also having the ability to shut down. Mm-hmm. And by that, I mean, for example, if it's a weekend where I'm not working, I completely leave the WhatsApp groups you know, associated to work. And my staff yeah. does that too. Yes, to me. I don't talk to anybody that I work with on weekends. I really, really try not to speak to any of my colleagues you know, mm-hmm. on weekends because I really want to disengage. Yeah, I really absolutely. want to have that time out. And oftentimes when I do that, when I go back then on a Monday, it's like, <laughs> once again. 
<laughs> it's very important to yeah. recoup and regroup yeah. because it you've got to uh, be on top of your game, Absolutely. especially when you are um, you are relaying messages yeah. of empowerment training. Yeah. Uh, you've got to be the example oh, you wish to see. So that's very important. That's massive because yeah. I, I think the other thing is when you are a training or when you are coaching, mm -hmm. it takes a lot out of you as an mm -hmm. as, as a human being, and you often then you know take energy from the other individual, yes. and at the end of the day, you find like oh my word, it's like I, you've got five exactly. people. That was actually my next you. question. Yes. So you already have ADHD and I ahead of me <laughs> because my next question was to be how. How do you alter your mood or when your you know when, when your mood is uh, affecting your performance yeah. how do you uh, alter that mood or handle the situation yeah I, 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 I don't recall a time when I really had to alter a lot I think I, I communicate quite well when I'm not in a, in a good space. Mm -hmm. And I think the people that I work with, I'm, I'm fortunate enough to have people that really understand my personality. Yeah. And they understand that I, I am quite vocal if I'm not okay. And I'm mm -hmm. able to say, you know what, I, I need time out. Mm -hmm. you know, I need, and if that means taking a walk, then I do that. Mm -hmm. If that means I'm going to my favorite shopping store to just look at some stuff, not even purchasing, but just looking at some stuff, I'll, I'll do that. Mm -hmm. But for me, it doesn't take me a while to sort of get my head back in the game. Right. Literally a five, ten minute of exiting, um, it usually does it, does it for me. Mm -hmm. And then I'm, I'm, I'm back in it because I try also not to take anything personal. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm there to conduct something and I do it. And yes, you do um, interact with people where you almost feel like when you leave, like, oh, I want to help this much or I really want to do this for this individual. Mm -hmm. But you have to get to a point where you disconnect yourself to to just what you need to do. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, I must say that uh, one of these quotes really sticks out for me right now before I go to my next question yeah. for you. Yeah. And I'm not even asking any of the questions that I prepared for you <laughs> yes, because you've thrown me <laughs> off. But I want to say that whether you think you can, you can. Yes. Whether you think you can't, then you can't. Yes. Okay, so that's, uh, maybe the quote doesn't go no, there, no. but it's something, it's absolutely something right. to that. It's absolutely but having right. said that, you should be so much that you are proud of and that you've achieved. Mm. And that's because of your mindset, yeah. because you obviously at one point thought, I can do this, yes. and you're dead. Yes. And then when you say, I can't do it, then you can't. Yeah. So, so what are some of those achievements that you are proud of? I think my, 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 my entire journey in the motor industry, mm -hmm. starting from that 2016 or 17, um, I'm, I'm, in, I'm, I'm very proud of my entire journey in totality mm -hmm. um, because I'm right where I'm supposed to be mm -hmm. at this present moment in my career. And I had to sit down and make a plan yes. of and, and, and really understand my career mm -hmm. plan in this motor industry because it's quite big. Mm -hmm. So if you're not really sure of who you are and what you want to achieve, you can stray. Yes. So I'm quite proud of the fact that I've stuck to the plan that I had mm -hmm. and that everything that I've worked hard, I mean, and the plan did not not come with its flaws. It came with its yeah. flaws, yeah. but I'm proud of how I've managed to overcome those specific flaws and, mm -hmm. you know, whether it being people not believing in you as, as an individual, yeah. you know, or people not believing in the value that you bring to an organization and you mm -hmm. often have to prove yourself 10 times harder. Um, those are some of the challenges that you, you come yeah. through, you know, the different cultural dynamics that you come to uh, at the dealership and you have to absorb all of that and still move on. Mm -hmm. Those I'm, I'm quite proud of that because um, some of the people that I started off with in the industry are no longer in the industry because of the amount of pressure and the amount of so many other things that happen. But I'm, I'm generally, I'm proud of myself and the journey that I've traveled to be where I am today. So yeah. Absolutely. Well <laughs> if I was close to you and there was no COVID restrictions, I would do that for you. But I'd like to say on that note, if you are offered a seat on the rocket ship, don't ask what seat, just take it. Yes. And fly. Yes. Absolutely. Yes. And any words of advice yeah. that you'd like to give to young women that are wanting to join us in this exciting industry? World? Yeah. 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 Any advice? For, 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 for females wanting to come into the motor industry, I would say have a plan. Mm. 
um, I would say have a plan because like I said it's quite a big industry and it's easy for you to sort of be like a her in the industry yeah you know absolutely um, but I think if you've got a plan you've got much more of a, of, of a bigger chance of actually achieving what you want to achieve mm -hmm. um, and and also being intentional about your plan mm -hmm. you know and being able to also um, sacrifice a little bit of yourself and by that I mean you know sometimes you take on a position not because it pays you well but because you've got a plan of what you want to learn from that position mm -hmm. and I think that's why I'm so proud of my journey once again because mm -hmm. for me the the the, the, the mandatory um, was not always a motivator for me. It wasn't always just about that. Yes. For me, it was about what can I learn from this current position that I'm in? Do I love it? Maybe I don't love it. Mm. But there's something that I want to learn from that yes. specific position because I want to then get to my next mm. position. And yeah. that's the plan I'm talking mm -hmm. about. So mm -hmm. if you are out there looking to come into this industry, definitely have a plan, be intentional about your plan and um, yeah, man, just... Isn't it true that 90% of success lies in the planning? It does. Absolutely. I, I believe that. Yes. I believe that, yes. And um, I think the other thing we need to appreciate is the fact that a plan doesn't always go according to plan. <laughs> you do you know what I say about that? When I always tell the people around me, yeah. whilst we're making our plan, yeah. the man upstairs, upstairs is, is laughing. A, yes, it's <laughs> like, uh, you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. But I think also, when you do making that plan, involve mm -hmm. that guy upstairs, Absolutely. you know, let him be that one that says, hey, this one, maybe not. And he mm -hmm. pulls you back in mm -hmm. because oftentimes in that journey, you will find that door that gets shut in your face. And I think that's that man upstairs and saying that's not the right door. Yep. Go forward yeah. or go backwards. Mm -hmm. So involve him in that plan. I mm -hmm. think it's, 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 it's very, very important. And the other thing is surrounding yourself with people that without them knowing your plan, they can see the plan in yes. you. Yes. Right? So so that is, is, is quite important because your 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 the people around you oftentimes will guide that plan as well mm -hmm. or derail that plan. Mm -hmm. So keeping your circle yes. to that plan is I think it's also quite It's important. so important because it's also said that you are the average of the five people you surround yourself on a daily basis yeah. with. So it's so important to understand that the future um, depends on what you do and Absolutely. how you act today. Yes. Um, who's Kia at home? Ah, oh, Kia is energetic. I can I see that. <laughs> Kia is energetic, uh, but Kia is also a mom, and she is. Oh, really? Yes, uh, she's a mom of a, of a, of an eight-year-old boy, and um, Kia is energetic. Kia loves family. Um, uh, Kia loves wine. Kia loves wine. <laughs> oh my God, I love wine. Um, but I love adventure as well. You know, mm -hmm. I love series. So I, I'm a big fan of watching TV. Mm -hmm. But uh, I, I watch TV for entertainment. And I think that's always the fight between me and my husband. Because like, but why are you watching this? You know, <laughs> I'm like, for me, watching TV is all about the entertainment. Right. Because all, there's so much seriousness happening in the world. There's so much drama. Mm -hmm. And there's so many things that are going wrong. But I, I, I always want to look at the fun side of life. Mm -hmm. To say, yes, we know all of these things are happening. But what is fun? What is, what is exciting? What can we look forward to? Mm -hmm. You know, over and above all the drama that's happening. So I, I enjoy that sort of thing as well. Just toning it down, watching a couple of series right. and spending time with my friends. I've got um, two friends who are entrepreneurs, so mm -hmm. um, I, I feed off of them as well quite a lot. So yes. I spend time with them. So big, big, big family, downtime, <laughs> friends, and yeah, that's what you, I do. You mentioned our husband in there somewhere. Yes. So I'm going <laughs> to kind of steer this conversation a little a bit away from business um, to... <laughs> The conventional black family where mm. the woman is now moving up the ranks, yeah. taking her place in society, yeah. in the economy. Mm. How is your husband dealing with all of this? Our generation, yeah. it's new. Yeah. It's new. Um, I'm Indian as you can yeah. see. <laughs> 
in the very similar situation where yes. our husbands have to now uh, balance their role sure. to share the responsibilities Absolutely. of what a mother would primarily Absolutely. have to take responsibility for. Absolutely. How's that with your husband and, and what advice can you give to men yeah. out there that are trying to navigate through this new yeah. way of living? Yeah. I think going back to that plan that we spoke about is understanding the plan and I think my husband understood the plan mm -hmm. look it wasn't easy because the, the industry the motor trade in totality does take up a lot of your time mm -hmm. because it's one of those industries where you have to work on a weekend you might work on a public holiday so it wasn't easy for him because remember I, I wasn't always in this industry yes. so when I came back into this industry it had to be an entire shift which I cannot say it was overnight for mm -hmm. him it really took a while but I think once again the communication part of it had to play quite a big role in saying this is my plan this is what I need to do to get to this plan mm -hmm. are you with me in this plan you right. know and 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 I think going into marriage he had to understand this plan because right. um, it, it's my career mm -hmm. you know and, and, and I'm, I'm proud of my career so he had to understand the plan and understand that this plan has got him having to or Kia not having to be home for a week because you you're training in Cape Town for example mm -hmm. you know or my son me not being able to attend certain school functions yeah. so that yeah. plan had to be communicated within the family not just even with my husband but also with my with my son yes um, and I think that support for me and their understanding around the plan is what sort of made it a lot more easier oh does yeah and I, I mean I travel a lot as yeah. well I'm all over the country yeah. days away from my kids yes. and trust me yes. eight is a nice age yeah enjoy <laughs> Because, girl, <laughs> when you get to 13 and 16 years old, that's my kids. It's a, it's a whole new playing It's a field. whole different game. Yeah, yeah. different game. I can different imagine. Game. I can but imagine. Uh, the support that I get from them yeah. is so uh, crucial. It's yeah. critical in what I'm doing. Absolutely. Because if they're comfortable, then I'm comfortable. Then you're comfortable. Then absolutely. And you don't worry about home. You yes. can focus on what you need to do. Mm -hmm. And you know that you've got such a wonderful support structure at home that you absolutely. can always fall back on. Yes. And I think that's where if my mood alters or whatever I just call my son he's quite funny mm -hmm. or my husband <laughs> and we just laugh and right. I'm like okay that's right. what I needed let's go well Kia I hope you understand based on this conversation yeah. that you are part of my plan <laughs> and I shall be involving you in my plans going because that's a powerful voice I appreciate it that's a powerful voice I appreciate and that. I am Desh the opportunist and I shall take this opportunity after meeting you yeah I wish you all the luck thank you so much um, you thank don't you. need luck you need that voice <laughs> <laughs> and you shall see yourself through to the top. Thank but, you. But um, well done on your Thank nomination. You. I'm so glad that I've met you. Yes. And um, you are definitely a part of my plan. Thank so, you. Thank you. Thank you Will for you coming. Will you let me know? I but shall. Okay. I shall. As you long hired. as I know. You hired. As long as I know the plan. <laughs> I'm very big on plans. So if I'm, you tell me the Absolutely. plan, we Absolutely. We go. Absolutely. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank you You're for welcome. coming and I wish you all the best. Thank you so much. And thanks for having me once again. It's been really lovely. You're so welcome. Thank you. You're thank welcome. You. And thank you, viewers. Thank you for watching, commenting and sharing our interviews and content. Our non-profit companies, the Motoring Woman of the Year Awards, which is is powered by MFC and Evo by NetBank and the Talk the Talk Studios powered by Sariti Solutions I aimed at recognizing and celebrating the women of motoring South Africa and don't you think women in motoring South Africa like Kia should be celebrated yes we are not just telling stories we are trying we are trying very hard to change lives for the yeah. better together we aim to empower and uplift the women of our trade and for those of you that are so Searching for your new ride, please visit www.auto.evo.africa. We have thousands of vehicles on sale for you to choose from, and we only advertise on behalf of reliable and trustworthy MFC accredited dealerships. This car listing portal is incredibly user friendly, and you can also find vehicle reviews and car maintenance tips and advice all courtesy of Talk the Talk Studios. Ladies, in light of the conversation Kia, this energetic, vibrant Kia, and I had today, 
I'd like to motivate you to not be afraid, to stand up for what you believe in. When we believe something is wrong in society, we speak up. We should not watch others get bullied. Um, instead, we should take action. We should advocate for ourselves and for others by displaying good morality and values in our everyday lives. In doing this, our positivity rubs off on others. And on that note, I would like to remind you that the question should never be, who's going to let me? The question should be, who's going to stop me? Absolutely. Yeah.